In today's episode, we're fishing for barred surf perch at a beach only few have access to. It's a place where Four, SpaceX three, actually launches rockets here, in California. Ignition. This place is Vandenberg Space Force Base, formerly known as Vandenberg Air Force Base. Not many people get to do it, but there's some great fishing opportunities for those lucky enough to get access. It will be closed until October once the protected snowy plovers are done having babies. In order to pull this off, I met up with my good friend Leroy who was able to get me a special pass to get in. Leroy is the new events coordinator at the Vandenberg Rod and Gun Club where he gets to plan events for active duty military, veterans, Rod and Gun Club members, and those who have clearance. We'll check on him in a little bit. There's a lot I won't be able to film due to the sensitive nature of national security, but hopefully you enjoy this episode anyway. If you do, please consider subscribing to the channel for fishing adventure content. Today I have my e-bike and some tackle. I brought jerk baits and soft plastics in hopes of catching some nice perch. Made it to the beach. Just gotta get down this slope. Ooh, I don't know if that was a good idea to go down right here. Oh, there's a little path right there. Man, it's steep. It changed quite a bit. But yeah, tomorrow this place closes down due to snowy plover nesting, which means it is going to be closed until October. Should be a good trip. Again, we're targeting surf perch today. But the biggest thing is gonna be finding a spot. At the end of this video, I will link a video that we did on how to identify structure. Today I have the Angway X24 that I reviewed in a past video. 24 inch tires on this thing. And it has a huge battery. It has a 29.2 amp hour dual battery. Sorry if it's getting a little windy. We're heading into a bit of a headwind. That's why I brought two rods today. We can throw Carolina rigs or we can hopefully throw some jerk baits if the wind stays pretty low for us. Fish Notify says it'll be five miles an hour, but this beach has flattened out since I've seen it last. But anyway, back to the bike. It has that huge battery, has really great range, and uh, it's good for trips like this where I want to head way down the beach, carry all my gear, not have to worry about how much gear you bring, and especially me because I bring a bunch of camera gear. If you guys are interested in one, they are doing a sale. These are now $1,500 with the promo code hook to cook 100 Normally it's $1,599, but with that promo code, if you guys want it, you guys save 100 bucks on this exact bike or the X26. So what I want to do is find a spot, first and foremost. Looks like a good one to my right right now. Big open cut. I might give that a shot. It looks good. But I'm gonna go ahead and cross this river. Doesn't look too bad. Just to be safe, uh, no, I think I could ride over it. I was saying maybe just to be safe, I should just walk it across, but it's super easy. Look at that. All right, cool. I'm just gonna check out the beach farther down and see if um, there's anything really good. If not, I could always circle back and hit that spot that we just saw. That spot's looking good too. Sandbar, sandbar, and a cut right in the middle. I like it. I did an about face because I see this nice flat area and I see a cut coming into this deeper water right here. I think that's a really cool spot to start throwing a jerk bait real quick. See if there's anybody home. Let's start with this. Start with the battle star. It's a little windier than I would like, but hopefully this fish, these fish are in tight. 
If not, just run to my backpack and grab my uh, Carolina rig, give this hole another shot. But the wind is blowing that way. So I'll say on this side of the hole where there's this sandbar right in front, current's looking good. Let's see if anybody's home. I am not getting much casting distance, but I'm getting far enough to where I'm pretty deep in that pocket. So I'll be able to work the edge of the pocket, see if these things are feeding in shallow. Currently almost 10 o'clock, so that gives us about three hours till high tide. This pocket's gonna continue to fill up, which is nice. Yeah, that wind's really pulling my line. Well, first spot's not always a hit. I should've got bit by now. I covered the hot zone. Let's keep looking. All right, I think I found the next pocket I wanna hit, but I do wanna look at it for a little while. So far it looks good. Yeah, nothing's breaking right there, right in the middle. So I'm gonna give that a shot. See if anybody's home. So here's what I got going here today. I got just your typical, what's called a Carolina rig. I'm using a little bit heavier line because I am use, using it as a double rig. Normally you just have one bait at the end of your line right here. But about halfway up my five foot leader, there's a dropper loop. And uh, if you don't know how to tie a dropper loop, I will leave a link to a short that I did. And it's essentially the same thing, just a lot smaller than I did in that example. But I've got a couple little grubs tied on on this size two hook we'll throw this around a little bit just again because of the wind and see if i can't start getting some fish already <laughs> Not that big. Yep. There it is, guys. Barred surf perch. This is what you'll find here. Vandenberg. The bait that it ate is actually a newer bait. It's known as the crawdad. It's a little male. Little male. Okay, found one of them. There might be more of these fish, definitely school. Looking for bigger ones today. This wind makes it really hard to detect bites because it's blowing the braid. But I just got another bite. There you go, there's a fish. Yeah, I think I found a pocket of them. This one ate the top bait, which is the flip-flops and socks, purple with the red paddle tail. This guy is still not the size we're after. A bit off the tail too. I'll keep throwing. That guy ate pretty close. And since we're fishing incoming tide, this pocket should get better and better. As long as that wave power stays consistent. Immediately, oh, getting bites already. Yeah, it's a Carolina rig day. The fish are there, but they just don't want the jerk bait right now. Seems like they just want that smaller profile. And I've done that. I've fished next to guys catching big fish on these little grubs. I had a bigger hit before this fish stuck, so I think there's bigger ones in there. There you go. That's a better, oh, he came off. That was a better fish. Oh yeah. Oh, came off. That was a nice fish. Stay on. This is another one. There was, that was three hits in a row. I think I might double up today. That's a nice fish. 
just based on getting those hits right away boom 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 i really think i might double up today that one's a that's a better model that is a way better model surf perch right there this one ate the god and baits too yeah and it's a male look at that thing that's a nice chunker I'd say about 13 inches or so on that crawdad nice this one's going in the perch pouch keeper there's another fish oh the bite is on now Good to feel a little bit of weight. Oh yeah, another good size. Another one on the bottom bait. Same one too from the beginning. I haven't had to switch. These appendages stay on really well. Another one, also a male. Got a little guy on. This one actually ate the top one. With this wave power, I am getting tangled a bit more. Definitely not the easiest day to fish today, but. It's all right. Based on the wind and the current being really crazy, I think I might go to a single Carolina rig. Having the dropper loop really requires almost ideal conditions yeah by no means is this a tangle free setup i'm gonna retie i'll tell you one thing guys i am a huge fan of these gotham baits right now i mean all the fish well most of the fish were caught on these and i haven't even had to switch this is the first time i'm actually switching so that is pretty cool. This is only the second one I'm using. Actually, probably since they're so new, this is probably like ultimately the fourth one I've really used. So I will have to hand it to Geo. He did a good job designing this bait. It stays on the hook really well because it has a lot of meat to it, but it still has that quality that the fish like with these appendages. Super durable. Has little antenna and everything. Oh. Well, I had a fish. Yeah, still on. Small one. First cast again, and I had a. a I had my bail open up and I thought I missed the bite, but it's a decent fish. Man, he wanted that bait. First cast. Oh man. Gotta break out the forceps for this one. If my bail didn't open, I don't think he would have had the chance to swallow it. Oh, he's not going to make it. He ate it too good.
great bite now. Yeah. Oh, that's a tank. That is a tank. <laughs> oh. On the got him baits. Look at that thing. I'd say that's 13, 14. Nice fish. Perfect hook set too. Awesome. Took a little bit of work to find these fish, but we found them. Tide's coming in. It should only get better. I think this is my fourth fish that I'm keeping. They like this bait. That first fish really tore it up because I had to pull it out of its throat, but it's still going. <laughs> I got like this is my fifth fish and I'm only on my second grub and they're good fish holy crap look at that monster another good one on that got on baits man yeah, that is sick. With the size two hook, it's hooking them really nice, especially these size fish. Usually you want to size down when it when there's the smaller grade, but the size two hook has been perfect so far. Quality. In terms of gear, you're gonna want around a 10 foot rod that can cast at least two ounces to be able to do this technique. The lighter the rod, the better. Oh, nice. And I do prefer a three or 4,000 size reel. And I do recommend 20 pound braid to 30 pound braid if it's gonna be a setup that you're gonna cast the Carolina rig or the jerk bait and then for the leader I am using a 25 pound leader and then for the leader of the Carolina rig I'm using the same so I'm using pretty heavy but it minimizes tangles and it gets bit just the same oh my gosh that's a monster that's another tank <laughs> oh my gosh that is awesome guys one rod I recommend would be like the Okuma Rockaway SP. That's a 10 footer. Also, one of the beauties of this Gotham Baits is it doesn't need it doesn't seem like you need to thread it on perfectly straight like any other paddle tail for it to swim correctly. Even if the hook is coming out of the side of the bait, I'm still getting bit on it. 
I think it's just that profile. It looks like just a perfect little nugget with <laughs> some appendages going. There's another fish. And this is a medium fast rod, medium action, medium heavy. And uh, these fish are putting a, a nice little bend to it. This one's not a keeper today, but it just goes to show that they'll eat a larger, large, large enough bait that'll fit in its mouth. First pouch is pretty heavy. So as you know, I have frozen water bottles in my backpack. Keeps my fish fresh and I get to drink it. But let's just get a quick count. That was a good one. This one's roughly 14 inches. So that's fish number one, two, nicely bled out, three, a good one too three four five this one's good too five six another nice one seven and it looks like i have one more so eight two more to make limits now my perch pouch is emptied it's not really meant to carry a limit either the perch pouch it's meant to just mainly keep you in the spot, let you catch five or six fish and then move on. So this is actually a lot for the perch pouch, but I think as long as you're comfortable wearing it and having the weight on your waist, you're good enough. But I'm gonna have a drink of my water and catch my final two fish. But it hasn't been an easy day fishing just due to the wind, super windy. Even casting the Carolina rig, I could feel my line in mid-air going with the wind. Let's catch our last two fish, guys. Might as well. Like that, that one feels nice. Sir. Yep. That that'll keep. That's a keeper. bait of the day right there the got em baits crawfish it's durable and the fish love it That's a good one. Stay on. Stay on. This would be the perfect tenth fish. I lost contact with him for a little bit there, but here he comes. Tenth fish. Yeah. There it is. Well, oh, not as good as it felt, but that is the tenth fish. What a blast. Last one on that crawfish. This one fought good. Nice little drag peeler. So this bait, I carry it in two colors at hooktocook.shop. This one's the motor oil, but it also comes in a synthetic oil, which is a little bit more of a pink. 
That works well too. So we're off the beach now. Leroy's gonna give us the quick dime tour of the Rod and Gun Club. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna be working at now. And then this is our little, kind of our little area that we're gonna be giving uh, like seminars and stuff like that on how to fish and, and those kind of things and uh, how to hunt and how to clean deer meat and all that kind of stuff. But it's, 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 it's in progress right now. We'll have uh, a smart TV. You know, this pool table will be pushed to the side, of course, because we need a pool table. But uh, yeah, our plan is to just bust this wide open. So if you have base access and you can get out here, you can sign up for some of these, you know, these programs and come out here and fish with us and that thing. My whole thing and Edward's thing is to educate people. And that's what we're going to do. So as soon as we get it all set up, which is going to be soon, we'll get it going. Hey, Roy, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, man. Anytime. Appreciate it. Without you, I couldn't have enjoyed this day. Got the fish. That's the important part. Yeah, got the fish. The fish delivery. On the last day that this place is open, so uh, just, well, that place, that beach that I fished, right. that section of that beach tomorrow forward until October is closed off. So that was the big reason um, yeah. I really wanted so to hit this fish place. So just sit for six months, six, seven months, just getting fatter and bigger for yeah. us to hit it in October. Yeah, that's gonna be good. <laughs> but stay tuned, guys, if you are interested in this. Uh, the Rod and Gun Club, if you can get here, there will be a calendar uh, where they will put on different events that I get to be involved in because Leroy is a good, good buddy of mine and I want to help him succeed. So, Thank and you. that entails helping you guys succeed out here. But with that said, I will leave links to everything I talked about in the description. But if you guys want to check out the episode where uh, I talk about the rigs and things like that, I'll leave a link right over here. How to read the surf and how I found the spot that I fished today. I'll leave that there as well. But guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Limit in the bag. 23 miles an hour. <laughs>